ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد we continue with the series of khutbas great stories great lessons today we have a story which i have mentioned here and i've narrated here before but it deserves to have a khutbah for itself in the sahih of imam muslim from the hadith of abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu he says one time he was sent by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on an expedition and we happened to see someone from the non muslims who was a high priority if you can call it that this person he used to be a great enemy of islam and muslims he had killed many muslims before he used to fight islam with all what he can his name was called thumama ibn uthal he says we found him by himself and there was a group of us and you we are so happy for capturing him so we captured him and brought him back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we brought him back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he got the news in madina he said to them tie him tie him to one of the pillars in the masjid tie him to one of the pillars in the masjid so they tied him there whenever he wanted to go for the call of nature he had to go to the call of nature they took him he wanted food they gave him food so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came out to him and said to him ma indaka ya thumama now o thumama what are you going to say what do you have now and he used to be the chief of his tribe banu hanifa he used to be the chief of them the leader he used to be the leader so it's like i said someone who's high priority high class ma indaka ya thumama what do you have to say now because he was still a non muslim islam had not entered his heart the kibr the arrogance and the pride he had of jahiliya still was inside him even in this state when he was tied like that a captive where he deserved to be killed because he had killed so many qala indi khair he says i have all good indi khair i have all good if you muhammad if you want to kill me then you kill someone who deserves to be killed وَإِنْ تُرِدِ الْمَالَ and if you want wealth for me to ransom myself فَسَلْ مَا شِئْتْ ask any wealth you want I'll give it to you and if you forgive تَعْفُ وَنْ شَاكِرْ you'll forgive someone who'll be thankful to you these are the three things he said I have all good if you want to kill me kill me I deserve to be killed the pride he had and if you want to make me to ransom myself I'll give you all the wealth I have he was the chief he was the leader of his people and if you forgive me i'll thank you even though he was a non muslim he still had those those good manners of being grateful or thankful to the people who do good to you if you let me go i'll be thankful 
So the Prophet ﷺ did not reply anything. He just smiled at him and he went away. So Thumama stayed there for a whole day, seeing the Muslims how they pray. When they enter, they give each other salam. They ask about themselves and each other. How is your family? How are you doing? Who needs help? He deserves to be helped. They see, he sees how the poor Muslims come and the Prophet ﷺ helps them. He sees everything about Islam, practically the brotherhood. Next day around the same time, the Prophet ﷺ says to him, Ma indaka ya thumama. What do you have, O Thumama? Talk now. He gives the same reply, Indi khair. If you want to kill me, kill me. I deserve it. And if you want money, ask whatever you want. And if you forgive me and let me go, I'll be thankful. The Prophet ﷺ just looked at him and he went away. Second day, Thumama, he observes the Muslims in the masjid. Seeing the brotherhood, seeing the love, seeing the help people have, seeing those good manners Islam had practically from the Prophet ﷺ and the best generation of the Muslims, the Sahaba. And if he wanted food, they gave him food. He wanted to go for the call of nature, he went for the call of nature. Third day, same thing. What do you have to say, O Thumama? Same reply. If you want to kill me, kill me. If you want to let me go, let me go. I'll be thankful. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unlike me and you, he says to the Sahaba, atliqu thumama, let him go. Untie him. Untie him, let him go. They were shocked just like you are shocked. He had killed so many, he deserved to be killed. He was a great enemy of Islam, imagine. And even in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, when he is a captive, he shows his arrogance. The Prophet ﷺ, says, let him go. So they let him go. Thumama says, so I went just outside the masjid, a few meters or a few kilometers, behind some dead palm trees. I found some water. I took a bath and I came back to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah And then he said these words, Wallahi ya Muhammad, ma kana ala al-ard wajhun abaghadu ilayya min wajhik faqad asbaha wajhak ahabba al-wujuhu ilayya He said, Wallahi O Muhammad, there was no person's face. There was no person I used to hate most than you. But now your face has become the most beloved face to me. And he said, Wallahi ma kana ala al-ardi deenun abghadu ilayya min deenikum. There was no religion on this earth which I hated most than your deen. But now it is the most beloved deen to me. Wa ya Rasulullah, I, I, was, I was on my way to do Umrah. You know, even in Jahiliyyah they used to do Umrah. The non-Muslims. I was always on my way to do Umrah. And these soldiers of yours, these true Muslims, they caught me. What do you advise me now? The Prophet sallallahu said to him, go and complete your Umrah. So he went into Makkah. When he entered the Makkah, because the Quraysh of Makkah, most of them were still not Muslims. They were fighting Islam. Thumama used to be an ally of theirs. When they saw him, they said, Hal asabta ya Thumama? You have changed, Uthumama. Did you become Muslim? Three days only in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They could sense it, they could feel it from him. It's not the same Thumama. He said, yes, I have become Muslim. And wallahi, from this day, no grain will come from Banu Hanifa without my permission. Because you fight the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he won't serve you any food. Makkah, there's nothing which grows in Makkah. Everything is brought into Makkah. And one of, those, one of those places which used to import, they used to import from is Banu Hanifa. And he's the leader. He says, as long as I'm Muslim, we won't serve you anything. After some months, the Quraysh were non-Muslims. They wrote to the Prophet ﷺ a letter. They said, Ya Muhammad, you encourage people to be good to their relatives. You, in your deen, you encourage people to do good even to the non-Muslims. Look what Thumama is doing to us. He's not serving us any more food. So the Prophet ﷺ, he wrote to Thumama, he said, give them food. This is the story of Thumama ibn Uthal, min Bani Hanifa. 
radiyallahu anhu. As you see, so many great benefits. So many great benefits. Number one, number one, in Islam, this religion has a source. This religion has a source, which if you want to do anything in the religion, it has to come from the source. You don't make up things from your own mind. You don't put your intellect before the source, which is the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. When the Sahaba, they caught Thumama, they did not say, you know what, this is Tumama. He killed my brother. He killed my cousin. He killed my friend. Let us finish him off. No. We have to take him back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's how true believers are. You want to do anything? If we differ in everything, we have to take it back to Allah and His Messenger. وَإِن تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah says, when you Muslims differ in anything, then take it back to Allah, meaning his book, and to his prophet, meaning his, so his sunnah, if you are true believers. It is strange when you find a Muslim, he has a different opinion with you, and you tell him, you know what, let's go back to the Quran and the sunnah. He says, no, let's go to my madhab. Let's go to my sheikh. You can go to the madhab, you can go to the sheikh if it is in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. If it's the same thing, then yes, alhamdulillah. But if his or her words, no matter what kind of a sheikh he is, contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, then you need to throw those words away. That's what Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he said. That's what Malik, rahimahullah, he said. And Shafi'i and Ahmad and Athawr and all the great scholars. That is benefit number one. That is lesson number one from this great story. And when they came to Medina, they had to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, we caught Thumama, what should we do? When they were told, tie him inside the masjid, they did not start to argue, Ya Rasulullah, he's a, not, he's a non Muslim. How can he be entered into a masjid? How can we tie him in the masjid? This is Thumama, let's kill him. No. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, and that's it. وما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيار. It is not. Allah said, it is not for the male or the female believer that when Allah and His Messenger have decreed something, that you should have a choice, saying yes or no. No. The, the statement of the believers when they're told something from Allah in his book or the Prophet Sunnah, wa ata'ana. We have heard and we obey right away. Tie him into the masjid. So they tied him up. And this shows you the second lesson. If there's benefit for a non-Muslim to come into the masjid, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, if you know he is going to be affected positively, then let him come into the must. In fact, you have to bring him. You have to. It's a must. We had a good example here in Ramadan. Sheikh Abu Yusuf, he was here with me in the evening. Awali brought him. The brother, he came here. He had his earrings. He was wearing his necklace. He was not a Muslim, but he came by himself on the door in Ramadan and said, I want to learn about Islam. I've been thinking a lot for, for a long time. And he used to walk around one of these buildings here. He came by himself in Ramadan after Asr. I can remember the day very clearly. And I said to him, sit. And he sat with me. One week he, he had the lecture. Second week, end of second week, he gave his shahada here. All of you remember him right here. Victor, that used to be his name. He used to sit there at the back. And some of the brothers used to look at me funnily with their angry faces. Why do you bring this person here? This is Islam, eh, Ikhwan. Especially us in the West. We have a message. You are a carrier of a message. Allah will ask you, each one of you. Wallahi, Allah will ask me. I gave you Islam. And you lived in a society where people need Islam. They are suffering internally. What did you do to help them? 
Did you even show them Islam? Allah will ask you, everyone here, everyone will be asked. So he became Muslim. Thumama became Muslim. Thumama became Muslim. There's nothing wrong with bringing the non-Muslim to the masjid to teach him about Islam or for him to see the beauty of Islam. So many people became Muslim like that. Because Islam is not a religion of secrecy. It's not a secret society. No, it's not. Doors are open. Doors are open. If we could, we would let the doors open 24-7. If we could. And Abu Huraira is almost 24-7. It's almost. Show people this is Islam. They just have to see for one, two, three days, two weeks, three weeks. Even if he or she does not become Muslim, you have done your job. In front of Allah, you see, Ya Rabb, I tried. But those who don't try, Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, will be asked, will be asked. So that is the second benefit. You can bring a non-Muslim to the masjid. If there's benefit, yes, why not? Number three, in Islam, we don't oppress anyone. There's no dhulm in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama, fala tadhalamu. O oh, my slaves, I have made dhulm, oppression, haram on myself, meaning Allah decreed on himself, he'll never oppress anything or anyone. And so I have made it haram between yourselves. فَلَا تَظَوَلَمُوا So do not oppress each other. Even if he is a non-Muslim, it does not mean it's a green light for you to oppress him or her. That is not Islam. I don't know who taught you that Islam. Just because he or she is a non-Muslim, there is no green light for you to say, okay, you can kill him. That is crazy ideas from the devil, from the shaitan, not Islam. And they might rhyme, shaitan and Islam, but Islam is different, shaitan is different. Those people have crazy ideas that Islam says you have to kill everyone. Who told you that? What Islam are you practicing? If Thumama was not killed and he had killed so many, what about this innocent Canadian or American or wherever he's from? Who He doesn't even have an idea of Islam. What wrong did he or she do? You are carrying a great burden on your back. Allah says it's haram. You should not oppress anyone. In fact, Allah commanded us to do good to them. Allah commanded us to do good to them. Those who don't fight Islam and they don't kick you out of, their ho of your houses. Allah does not prohibit you from those who don't fight your deen and they don't kick you out of your lands that you do good to them and be just to them because Allah loves those people who are just. And how are they going to become Muslims? if they don't know this religion is of justice. So that is number three. Even Thumama was not just slaughtered and massacred. The wrong idea which people have about Islam, tell them these stories. This is Islam. This is the prophet of Islam, the prophet of mercy, Nabi Rahma. He was tied there, and when he wanted food, he was given food. He was not tortured. When he wanted to go to the call of nature, he went to the call of nature. And he was not tortured even in the interrogation he was given. He was not forced to, do, to say or to sign anything. This is Islam. Ya Thumama ma indak. The Prophet asked him very good. What, do you have, what can you say now? He's looking at what Thumama is thinking. Has he changed now? No, he hasn't, he hasn't changed. So the Prophet knew he knew the right recipe for him to change. Let him sit there and see how the Muslims behave. Let him see the true manners of Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is how he acted. Before going ahead to the greatest lesson we get in this story, 
Look at the answer of Thumama. He says, عندي خير. I have all good. The arrogance he had. إن تقتل تقتل ذا دمين. If you kill me, you kill someone who deserves to be killed. I have, I have shed a lot of blood myself. وَإِن تَمْنُنْ تَمْنُنْ عَلَى شَاكِرْ If you let me go, you let go someone who's thankful. If this person, Thumama radiallahu anhu, before he was a Muslim, with all the pride he had, with all the killing he had done, he knew the importance of being grateful to those who do good to you. What about me and you, Ikhwan? What about me and you? Huh? What about me and you? Are we grateful? Are we grateful to our own parents who have done so much for us? Are we grateful to our wives who do so much for us? Are the wives grateful to the husbands who work so hard to make life good for them? Are we grateful to the massage that provides so much services for us? Are we grateful to the friends who give you advice when you need it and help when you need it most? Are we grateful? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ If you're not grateful to the people, it just means you're not grateful to Allah. You haven't thanked Allah if you don't thank the people who do good for you. It's something you really have to think of. And it's the reason why most of us, we continue to suffer in our lives. Because people do good to us, but we're not thankful to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says the opposite. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah has decreed, he has announced, when you become thankful, he gives you more and more and more. When you're not thankful, Allah takes away his favors and his bounties. Everyone should ask himself. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله كما يليق بجلاله الحمد لله ملء السماوات ملء الأرض ملء ما شاء من شيء بعد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد ورد اللهم عن أصحابه الكرام ثمامة بن أثال من بني حنيفة This is his story The fourth lesson we get Being grateful to people This is very very important And it used to be, as you see, it used to be one of the good things the Arabs in Jahiliya, pre-Islamic era, they used to have. They used to have some good manners. They used to have those, the bad things they used to do. They used to be mushrikun, they used to worship idols, they used to kill their daughters, which Islam came and purified all of it. We'll talk about that later on. But they still had some very good manners. One of them was this. When someone did good to them, they appreciated that. And this is one of the meanings where you get from the hadith when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, I have been sent to perfect, to complete the good manners. Because they were there, some of them. But Islam came to maximize them and make them part of our personalities and our religion. People are thankful, even those who are not Muslims, but they do it just because it's courtesy. We do it because this is Islam. This is Islam. Man lam yashkuri nas, lam yashkuri Allah. The one who is not grateful to people, he is not grateful to Allah. That's how it is. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man suna alakum ma'arufan, whoever does something good for you, fakafi'uhu, then do something similar for him. This is Islam. Whoever does something good for you, do something like that for him also. As a token of appreciation. 
And it does not mean that you go around doing good for people so that they can do good to you. When you do that, there's no reward. There's no reward. You do good for people for the sake of Allah. You should not be concerned. They'll be thankful. They'll give you something back. You should not be concerned because that is one of the signs of true Muslims. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. They gave for the sake of Allah, and they say in their hearts, "We don't want from you thanks, or that you give us something back." That's not what we want. We give you for the sake of Allah. إننا نخاف من ربنا يوم عبوس قم تريرا وفيا a day which will be so tough. That's why we want to save ourselves. But Islam says to you, who's been the favor has been done to you. That you should appreciate that and do something similar to him. And when you do that, you do it for the sake of Allah because the Prophet ﷺ commanded you. You say to yourself, Ya Rab, my brother has given this to me, so I want to fulfill that command you gave me. That I should do good to him, so you do good to him also. The Prophet ﷺ then said, if you can't, if you can't do that thing for him also, if you cannot show that token of appreciation, then make dua for him. At least make dua for him. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "The best, the best appreciation you can give to someone who does something to you is for you to say to him, 'Jazak Allahu khairan.' This word which you say, like it's nothing, it is heavy, it is heavy." The Prophet ﷺ said, the best thing you can ever do to someone who gives you something or does something for you is saying to him, Jazakallahu khaira. May Allah reward you with good. That is the best you can do. And it should come from the heart, ya ikhwan. It should come from the heart. You are actually making dua for your brother or your sister. May Allah reward you with good. And here we have to note something which most people we do or some people they do. Just say, Jazakallah. It is good, but you should say, as the Prophet ﷺ commanded, as Jazakallahu khaira, may Allah give you good. If it's a sister, a woman, you say, Jazakillahu khaira. This is how much, and if you wanted to talk about being grateful, we'll go on and on and on and on. But this is our deen. This is the story of Thumama, which will continue next week, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who have good manners. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are thankful to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us and our children a good progeny who will serve this deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us keys for people to, to show the people the goodness of Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us reasons that the people who live with, they enter into Islam and have the best lives like we have. Aqim as-salam.